All right, so if you are an award-winning chef looking to open a restaurant, Houston is a great place to set up shop. Because of our diversity, we have some of the best food, and now a new chef is stirring the pot. He has the right ingredients to open a restaurant here. After all, Chris Cosentino won season four of Top Chef Masters. Guts prevail, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I knew before I left that I was going to cook all four. Win or lose, I could have looked myself in the mirror and been happy and proud of myself. Sticking to your beliefs and following through and not cooking for the critics, to me, is, is winning my way. And joining us with some of the food on the menu this fall at Rosalie, his new restaurant. Please welcome Chef Chris Cosentino. Good Thank morning. You. Good morning. All right. I love these competition shows because I think so many of us, we just don't realize what goes on between the kitchen and before that plate actually gets on our table, it just magically it's appears, It's a lot, it's right? a lot. Yeah, and although you're in a contest setting, there are true elements to what it takes every day to run a restaurant. You know, I think what people don't realize is it's as true to the actual every day as, mm -hmm. you, as you're seeing on the show. Mm -hmm. So for instance, we're being thrown all these different challenges, but it's just like the restaurant. The challenges in the restaurant are maybe somebody didn't show up, the product didn't show. You have to ebb and flow and change as you yeah. go. Too much of one thing, too little of yeah, another. Yeah, and it's, and you know, granted we're not cooking on the side of a cliff at the Grand Canyon every day, <laughs> but that being said, it is always a challenge. Something always breaks, something always goes wrong at the restaurant, and it's how you move through it. It's yeah. how you ebb and flow, and if you don't, then you're not gonna succeed. You're not gonna continue to make your guests happy. When it comes to opening restaurants, there are kind of like two things that are always at play. How different can you make the food? And sometimes it's just how basic and fresh can you make the food, right? Because we're, we're used to certain things that are comfort foods, but then sometimes you do things very differently. Uh, you had to do organ meats was one of the challenges well, on the show. Well, I mean, that's kind of, it wasn't that it was a challenge. I mean, that's, well, it's, it, yeah. it's based for a long time. That was my go to is really about sustainability and educating people on how to eat everything. Right? right. Not just produce, but with meats. And in the U.S. for many, many years, no one ate a lot of these cuts of meat. Right. It was really considered um, peasant food or you would mostly find it in ethnic markets. Yeah. And now it's a big come, bowl of steaming hot chitlins is what I'm talking about. They, those are really delicious. Pickled pig feet, pickled pigs now. You know, I've, I'm not a big pickled pigs food <laughs> fan, but I do. Trotters well, are my as favorite. As my mom said, you were a big fan of it when you were hungry growing up on the farm in oh, East yeah, Texas. I'm sure, right? I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> but yeah, I think when you when you start to look at a restaurant and you're looking at a business and it's really ultimately about making people smile. I give yeah. taste memories for a living. Ah, very And cool. to me, that's a really important way to look at it. You know, I'm there for the guests and I'm there to make people smile. I mean, think about it. I have people that come to the restaurant for weddings, anniversaries, engagements, birthday parties, and those are really important moments in people's lives. Yeah. And you really want to give them the best taste memory possible so they walk away with that, and it's something forever. And Rosalie is based on your childhood taste memories. Yes. You grew up in the kitchen alongside your grandma. So my great-grandmother Rosalie immigrated from Italy. Um, unfortunately, when she passed away, we had no idea how old she was because documentation was mm. really not so great. And she really instilled something in me that was just, it was in the background always because everything was tomato pie or she would hand crank pasta. I mean, all these things were there, but I never really, I never really started to realize it was there until I got just enough older and she'd passed away and I was working in restaurants and I was like, oh, this is what she was talking about. Yeah. This is that moment. Yeah. So Speaking of that moment, you have a moment right here. Yes. You've got the, the burrata. And, and what I love about what's happened, it seems like in the last maybe five, 10 years in, in America is that we've come back to the realness of food, right? Yes. And the, the nutrient dense, the fresher you can get it, the better. And, and it shows up in the flavor. Yeah. So the key for me is ultimately seasonality. You've, there's a couple different ways I look at it. First, you eat with your eyes, mm -hmm. right? If you're going to look at it, it's going to be vibrant yeah. and beautiful and fresh. Color. A lot of colors going on. But also, where are you getting your product from? What farm? Is it local? Is it organic? Mm -hmm. And is it that is giving transparency to your guests so they're more willing to jump in. Yeah. So this is kind of a riff on a snack food that's not super healthy. So I like to call this Taste the Rainbow. So everybody knows what Skittles are. And yeah. the commercial <laughs> well, platform was Taste the this Rainbow. This looks very healthy compared to Skittles. It does, yeah. but it does look like Skittles. So it's all those different vibrant colors that you would see, those little round, uh -huh. but these are all summer fruits, right? Cape gooseberries, you have multiple different varieties of cherry tomatoes in different colors, blueberries, and grapes. Yeah. They're all fruit, okay, tomato falls. I've never tasted that before. They, have a, they look like a tomatillo when you get them. They have a little skin on the outside. They're oh. tart and sweet at the same oh. time. 
like an orange, but mm -hmm. a little tangerine. Or something. Super delicious. Yeah, well, that's good. So it's going right. to be a nice counterpoint to the rich burrata. So mm -hmm. burrata is is beautifully pulled mozzarella, but inside you have the stracciatella, that pulled, really loose, delicious mozzarella. Mm, yes, yes, very creamy like. Okay, exactly. Put it together you ready us. to go? Mm -hmm. So what I have okay. here is just a very simple basil pesto. So we're gonna put this down, and the key here is I want it to emulate grass. Ah, okay. Okay. And I'm gonna stick my fork in there and just yeah. taste that real quick. Oh gosh. Mm. Okay. okay. I, I told him before the show. I said when food is really good, it makes me dance. <laughs> so here's that burrata. You can see it's nice and soft. Right. Okay. Now there's and burrata the was such something that we grew up with, kind of the hard mozzarella cheese, Correct. right? And so this is something different. This is very different than your traditional mozzarella. One of the fun things that we're going to be doing at Rosalie is we're actually going to be pulling mozzarella to order. Oh, that'd be cool. So you're going to get warm mozzarella at the table. Okay. Oh, that sounds good. So now there's our cloud. Mm -hmm. Right, oh. so there's the grass, that's the ground, and there's your cloud, and I'm gonna cut that open so you can see the inside. There's that nice creamy mm -hmm. center. So, wow, there's they a lot of, mm, I hear they, a lot they, of hungry people. Are you they, guys they starving the out there? today without eating breakfast. Did that's anybody have happened. breakfast yeah. this morning? <laughs> Remember, breakfast is the most important <laughs> meal of the day. day. That's right, and my breakfast is gonna be some burrata. So, we're gonna add a little blueberries, and I've got some grapes here. And this is cool because burrata, we've seen more and more of it today, but the whole thing is what kind of twist do you put on? So it's kind of like a blank palette, if you will, or a blank canvas for you to do your skill on it. Yeah, and I think it's really ultimately about letting the product shine for itself because I don't want to go too crazy. And everything's going to sing. So I have in here all those different pretty... So mm -hmm. now that's starting to look like a bag of Skittles, right? Right. You're not <laughs> one of those prima donnas Skittles. that only wants one color, right? No. Give okay. Me just making sure, because you know they say all those famous folks, all they want is one color. The monochromatic. The, type mon of yeah, thing? they're like, yeah. I just want green well, grapes. I'm dressed or... monochromatically, but I, I really want some, um, so some color in my food. Just a really beautiful red wine vinegar. You can okay. smell that. It's really, really fresh. It smells like a really wonderful Pinot Noir. Mm. Yeah, it does. Okay. Really. <laughs> Did you just swing no, that? No, I did not. I did not. I don't oh know my what you're goodness, about. it's too early in the morning for <laughs> I did that. I not know what you're talking about. I did bring some wine for you if you want. <laughs> All right, and you had some. Is it just coarse sea salt? This is uh, Jacobson sea salt. It's this really great salt that I use out of Portland, Oregon, where this guy, Ben Jacobson, goes to the coast and harvests all the water in five gallon buckets and brings it back and makes his own salt. Wow. Okay. okay. And it makes a difference, doesn't it? It makes a huge difference. So now I'm just going to start putting the rainbow over the cloud. Oh. Yeah. Get out of there! So good. There Am you I ready? Go. Can I go in? You can go in. Okay. And as I go in, I just want to say, uh, years ago, uh, when you said, when I grow up, I want to be, people would say, like, nurse, doctor, teacher, firefighter, whatever, police officer. Uh, today, you got more and more kids, and I think in part because of all of the shows that say, when I grow up, I want to be a chef. Uh, you have ADHD and dyslexia. Welcome to the club. Um, so this kind of works for you. It does. I think um, learning to harness your disabilities, I, I like to tell kids that it's uh, actually a superpower. You know, mm -hmm. everybody, all kids right now are really into Marvel and they're really into watching mm -hmm. Spider-Man and all that. And I think when you can really look at your, your what most people consider a disability and turn it into an ability, right? Right. Or Having, focus on your abilities as opposed to the disabilities. I, yeah. I'm not going to be a gymnast, right? This is not going to be the thing I'm going to do. Exactly. Ever, so, so, but you know, having ADD, it teaches us to focus on many things, not just mm -hmm. one thing. Mm -hmm. So that allowed me, as a young cook, to work circles around other cooks because I could, in my head, I would click from thing to thing to thing to thing, thing to thing to thing yeah. to thing. And you're managing a kitchen in the, in the heat of the moment. If the you bit, can, so. if you can't manage everybody, yeah. And when you walk into a restaurant and you're seeing it's super busy and the tickets, you hear the guy expediting or the gal expediting and you see the tickets coming in, the food coming out, that is managing chaos, which is ultimately what ADD is. Yeah, I, I love watching it. I love watching it. Okay, so we'll wrap up with Rosalie's coming this fall. What can we expect? Uh, very classic, old-school Italian mm. with a lot of my great-grandmother's love put into it. I'm really, really excited to be here. All right, we're going to give your great-grandmother a kiss up in heaven. There you go. <laughs> this is really, really good. And this is kind of like representing that kiss from great-grandma up in heaven. Yes. All right, thank you so much no, for No, thank you in. for having me.